Good afternoon. Welcome to the Wilson Center. On, on behalf of Jane Harmon, I, I'm Andrew Seeley, Executive Vice President of the Woodrow Wilson Center. Extremely pleased, President Kikwete, to have you here at the Wilson Center today. Welcome here. Karibu. Great honor to, to have you with us. Doing well. Uh, welcome, members of the... <laughs> If he responds, I don't know how to, yes, <laughs> my Swahili has ended there. Um, a great pleasure to have members of the cabinet and the official delegation and, and the ambassador with us here today. Um, the public, good to have you here. Dr. Muyangwa, director of our Africa program. Um, welcome for what we expect to be a, a very exciting, informative, um, and insightful uh, discussion by President Kikwete and then a back and forth discussion with Dr. Muyangwa. Um, we have many special guests here. Before I introduce the president, let me acknowledge, uh, I see Steve McDonald back there, he used to run uh, the Africa program. Um, Thelma Duggan, right here, who is chair of the Finance Committee and member of the board of the Wilson Center. Thelma, thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for everything you do for the Wilson Center. Um, Ambassador Johnny Carson, good to have you here. Um, one of our most distinguished diplomats in the United States, as, as well as former assistant secretary for Africa. Um, uh, from Cap Brown Capital. Good to have Cal here with us as well. We really appreciate all the work that Brown Capital does with us and Eddie and Sylvia Brown, the major supporters of our Africa program and the Wilson Center as a whole. Um, Anthony Welters is here with us today as well. Thank you for everything you and, and uh, Ambassador Beatrice Welters have done with the Center. Good to have you with us. Um, and to everyone else, I know I'm probably forgetting a few, a few other people. I know we have a few ambassadors from several countries. Welcome to the Wilson Center. Good to have you here with us. Before we start, um, I know we have some colleagues from Kenya here with us, and we want to extend our condolences for the Garissa University attack by al-Shabaab, in which over 150 people were killed. Um, many of our countries, including this one, we've suffered terrorist attacks um, of different kinds, and, and this is a painful moment in Kenya, it is around the world, for, for this attack. And so we want to extend our condolences to everyone there. Um, about the Wilson Center, for those of you who have not been here before, the Wilson Center is a, was established in 1968 by an act of Congress. Um, we are a public-private partnership intent on bringing together the worlds of public ideas with the worlds of public policy. Um, we are a living memorial to, to Woodrow Wilson, who was the only president of the United States with a PhD. And as that, we try and pull together on global issues um, the, the people who have time to think deeply about issues with those who have to make timely decisions about them. The center is a safe political space where we address critical current and emerging challenges for the United States and for the world. We have a particular commitment to Africa and to issues in the U.S.-Africa relationship. Um, we have had a number of presidents from Africa here, from Malawi, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Somalia, and Madagascar, and we're delighted and honored to add President Kikwete to this illustrious list. Um, we work, I think most of you know the Africa program and Dr. Miyango's work, we work on a number of issues from governance to security issues to um, issues of well-being in Africa to the important economic partnership that exists between African countries and the United States. Um, let us, before introducing President Kikwete, let me set the context for our discussion. Tanzania is a country that has made great progress over the past decade. It has enjoyed multi-party politics since 1992. Economic growth rates that have averaged 6.7 percent since 2006. Anyone who saw the jobs numbers in the United States this morning, we would die to have a, a growth rate of 6.7 percent in this country. That is a truly extraordinary testament to a country that has really been moving ahead very quickly. We have the Minister of Finance here, so this is a, a great testament to, to the work on the financial side as well. Um, Tanzania has remained largely peaceful and stable in what is otherwise a region characterized by conflict and instability. Tanzania has hosted many refugees from around the region. There's been a democratic transfer of power through elections. It's become simply routine um, with the next election scheduled for the fall. Primary school enrollments have soared with the removal of school fees. And in 2012-2013, Tanzania launched the Big Results Now initiative to foster and strengthen delivery to the people in six major priority areas. Energy and natural gas, agriculture, water, education, transport and mobilization of research, resources. And as you know, gas reserves have also been discovered, which gives hope for even further progress in the future. There are also, however, a number of challenges, and I know we'll hear from the President about this as well. Twelve million Tanzanians live below the poverty threshold. Um, there has been a challenge in, in translating the great economic growth rates into development and human security gains for the people, and Tanzania has made progress in nearly all of the eight millennium development goals, which is quite impressive. 
As his final term comes to a close in October, we've asked President Kikwete to reflect on his presidency, looking at the many accomplishments that he has had during his administration, as well as some of the challenges he faces, and as well as looking forward and to uh, the broader continent in Africa, um, what are some of the opportunities and the challenges going forward. Um, let me introduce him. President uh, Kikwete was elected the fourth president of the United Republic of Tanzania in 2005. Um, he was re-elected to a second term in 2010. Um, he holds a degree in economics from the University of Dar es Salaam. He has almost 30 years of, oh wait, more than 30 years of public service, including military and civil service. And he has served in key ministerial positions from finance to the foreign ministry, water, energy and mineral resources, and international cooperation. As Minister of Foreign Affairs, he led efforts to bring about peace in the Great Lakes region, particularly in Burundi and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As Chairman of the East African Community, he played a pivotal role in moving forward the process of regional integration in East Africa. He also served as the chairperson of the African Union from 2008 to 2009, and in that role he played a significant part in finding a solution to the post-election crisis in neighboring Kenya. Just yesterday, for those of you that were following this, just yesterday the UN Secretary General appointed President Kikwete to chair the high-level panel on global responses to health crises, a timely appointment given the recent Ebola crisis, Ebola crisis in West Africa. He is the recipient of numerous honors and awards and his long career in public service was encouraged and nurtured by former President Nyerere, the first president of Tanzania. President Kikwete, I invite you to take the podium and we look forward to your remarks and then to your dialogue with Dr. Monde Muyangwa. President Kikwete, welcome to the Wilson Center. <coughs> Well, I thank you, Thomas, for the, for the introductory remarks and for the kind words you have said about me. Monday, Director of Africa Program. But guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thank Jane Harmon, President, for the invitation to speak at this prestigious and world-renowned Woodrow Wilson Center. I feel greatly honored and privileged to have this conversation with the distinguished audience here. I'll always cherish this rare opportunity. In her invitation, she asked me to share my personal experience, leadership challenges as a president of the United Republic of Tanzania, particularly as an outgoing one. <coughs> also, she asked me to share my thoughts about U.S.-Africa relations. This invitation could not have come at a better time than this. I'm going to leave office after the elections in October on completion of my mandatory two terms as president of my great country. I've had the opportunity to serve. I think I made my contribution. It is time to move on. Well, I must admit that I had a hard time deciding where to start and where to end, especially about what and how much to say, because there is too much to talk about. As such, I apologize to those who may feel I did not talk about what they would have wished me to say. Please blame it on limited time. <laughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after being nominated presidential candidate for, of my party in May 2005, I sat down to contemplate in greater depth the tasks ahead of me, if elected. You know, because as I was contemplating to, to put up forward my name, I had some ideas. But after being nominated, then I had to think, to think through the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and when I met people, I should tell them why I'm fit to be president. I always reflected on the same during the campaign and after being elected and after being elected president. During my maiden speech while opening the National Assembly on the December 30th, 2005, I almost crystallized my thoughts now. Because this is the speech where I, 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 I told Tanzanians what I was going to do for our country. I underlined six major policy tenets which were to guide and define my presidency. The first one was holding the country together, 
to maintaining peace and political stability, which is the hallmark of Tanzania. Three, promote fast socioeconomic growth and development as a measure to fight and poverty and accelerate development of Tanzania. Four, consolidate democracy and ensure good governance, rule of law and human rights are observed. Five, undertake an unrelenting fight against crime, including corruption. And six, develop good relations with all countries in the region, in Africa, and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I took over leadership of our country from my predecessor, His Excellency President Benjamin William Mkapa, whom I served as his, his, in his cabinet as his foreign minister for 10 years. In 2005, when I was taking over, the country was emerging from the difficult times of structural adjustment programs. That time we are now on the PSI, Project Support. The focus, and of course, in liberalization related reforms, but we are painful to our economy and to our people. The focus on debt repayment had a negative impact on the government's ability to provide basic services such as health, education, and water. Less than 10% of our primary school leavers found their way into secondary school. The GDP of the country was $14.14 billion, and per GDP per capita was $375. On the political front, with just 13 years of multi-party experience, many of our democratic and accountability institutions were at their formative stage. Opposition parties occupied less than 15% of the seats in parliament. There was a political standoff in Zanzibar, which was threatening security and political stability in the Isles and in the entire country. That very same time, that, or that very same year, Tanzania experienced unprecedented drought causing acute food, food shortages, necessitating more than 3.7 million people to be given food as support by our government, our new government. At the same time, dams at hydropower stations did not have enough water, <coughs> hence not producing enough electricity or produ not producing electricity with their full capacity. There were brownouts. Which, which compelled our government to, to source emergency power producers, which landed our government into trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, Tanzania is a nation of great diversity, making the task of holding the country together not a small one at all. The people of Tanzania belong to over 120 tribes, different races, although people of the African descent are the overwhelming majority. Moreover, people of Tanzania subscribe to different religions, and there are many who do not belong to any. Maybe they have not yet chosen, they have, they have chosen to be non-aligned, <laughs> or are still contemplating <laughs> which way to go. <laughs> but there are so many. After the reintroduction of multi-party system in 1992, the people of Tanzania joined various political parties. There were already signs of acrimony developing from the different political affiliations, and they were, in a way, threatening the long-standing peace and stability of the nation. As we all know, the United Republic of Tanzania is a new nation, born on the 26th of April, 1964, from the major of the People's Republic of Zanzibar and the Republic of Tanganyika. Managing and balancing differences between these two partner states needed special attention. As alluded to earlier, Zanzibar at that time, there was the dangerous standoff between the ruling party, my party, CCM, and the main opposition, Civic United Front, CUF. Because system was strong in Unguja, and CUF strong in Pemba, the standoff also in, in Zanzibar was threatening to, to, to drive a wedge between the two islands. So it's something that we had to 
intervene. Again, it was the threat to keeping the country united. Ensuring that the people of Tanzania celebrated their diversities, but they did not split the country into hostile camps and entities was, ne was a necessary thing to, thing to do. Temptations of demagogue politicians, and we, don't, we are not short of them, <laughs> to exploit the social, uh, the social fault lines as means to consolidate and ascend to power is much higher. We have already seen it happening before, and there are still indica indications that it could be happening. So there is a great deal of political management that is required to avoid the dangers and threats from these particular situations. Fortunately, I was trying to underscore why I was talking about holding the country you know, together. There were threats and dangers, and itself need, 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 needed, needed levels of, of political, acu political acumen to manage the, the various differences and still hold the country. Because when people see the country stable, peaceful, they think, uh, they think, they think things are so rosy. But there are so many undercurrents. And it, it is only a factor of, of, the, of, of the adroitness of the politicians and some of the leaders that keeps the country together. But otherwise, if you miss that, then the, the country can just blow up as another country. Fortunately, the founding fathers of Tanzania, Malim Julius Nyerere, the first president of Tanganyika and the first president of Tanzania, Sheikh Abed Yaman Karume, the first president of Zanzibar and the first vice president of Tanzania, had laid strong foundations to ensure that, that these diversities don't, don't break up the country. As I said, we celebrate because if you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. If you're a Christian, or you're a Christian, you won't change. You yes, celebrate that diversity, but it should, not, it should not be a cause for you to go at each other's throat because of that differences. But there is... There is no 100% foul proof. I cannot say that 100% will succeed. That is why my two predecessors, His Excellency President Ali Hassan Mwinyi and His Excellency Benjamin Mkapa, and the successive generations of presidents of Zanzibar have maintained the good policies initiated by the founding fathers of, of, of our country. I also vowed to follow the good examples of my predecessors. So far, so good. I'm proud that we have been able to continue to hold the country together despite the challenges and threats. We have dealt with threats wherever they arose or whenever they arose. I supported and contributed to, to the political process that saw the two contending parties in Zanzibar sign a political accord in 2010. It, it was not easy because I, in my speech to parliament, I spoke about it. I said, I'm not happy with the standoff in Zanzibar and I'll use my political capital to make sure that we get. It took us two years before we initiated because I had to lobby within my own party to get cons consent that we should talk to the other side. We had a meeting of the National Executive Committee of, of the party. It was, so, it was so rough. And I think my assistant thought that that meeting is going to break, to break the party. But we sat there. We, uh, we said, look, let, let's, have, let's have a lunch break. We did a lot of canvassing and consultation. We came back. Well, we agreed, and everybody was singing CCM, CCM, CCM. We concluded. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's not easy. And then, of course, we had the negotiation themselves. They were so difficult. And then we had, at some point, then we had to see how, how we go after, after the agreement, how are we going to structure. The, the government itself. So there was a lot that, that went into it until we, we concluded and, and had the agreement. Now, there is peace in Zanzibar. There is, a, there is harmony in Zanzibar, which was not there in the past. The, the political accord had that attributed, that contributed to, peace in, to peaceful elections in Zanzibar and the formation of government and national unity between my ruling party, CCM, the opposition party, CUF, 
because leaving this aside, I have never shied away from reaching out to political and religious leaders wherever and whenever it was wise to do so. It was from time to time then something erupts. It is either by the politicians or sometimes it's the religious leaders who are causing that trouble. And it, it, you, you, you say, okay, fine, let's sit down, let's talk. We talk over the issues and agree that this is not the best way to go or this is the way to go. And it has, it has really helped us. It has helped us keep the country together. With regards to the differences between the Zanzibar government and the mainland government, I launched the, 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 the constitutional review process with, 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 that, with, with that hindsight in mind. That I thought a number of the issues that were creating the kind of disharmony between our two governments are, are very much related to, or ca can, be, can be best handled when we, when, 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 when we deal with the Constitution. We do a constitutional review, and we have the process is, is, is underway, and a number of those issues have actually been, 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 been dealt with. Of course, not everybody is happy because everybody, some people want, I want to see mine there. If I don't see it, then the whole thing is, is, is not good. We also appeal to them to be accommodative. There is give and take. You cannot be there and take everything and leave the others with nothing. So we, we started that, and of course, but the, the, the constitutional review process is more comprehensive. It goes beyond the issues of Zanzibar to improve on the existing constitution so as to see that the country is governed better and the people live in a situation that is more harmonious and there is development taking place. I equally never hesitated to take resolute action against all those who use diversity to incite chaos, civic disobedience, break laws, and disrupt peace. Again, as I said, so far so good, the country is, is at peace with itself and we hope it will continue that way. But when you have an election year, then you have got to, to be wary of what, what, what could possibly happen, and we are, we are preparing for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I was elected in 2005, the first time and again 2010, on the pledge that I will deliver on the promise made by my party in our, in our election manifesto of better life for every Tanzania. My Shabora, Kukiram Tanzania, that's why they say. It was a pledge to change the lives of the Tanzanian people for the better. Move them from where they were to somewhere better. This meant, in our view, doing two things. One, to see people's incomes increased so as to be able to meet the amenities of life easily. And two, to enable our people to get access to better social and economic services. Because those who don't have water supply, their life is not good. When they get that, their life is better. Of course, when I talk about social and economic services, I have in mind healthcare, education, water supply, electricity, roads, aviation services, etc., which are not readily available to many people. And those who are getting it are not getting it are not getting the best quality of the services that they should get. In pursuit of these lofty goals, we decided to stay the cause on economic reforms, started by our, our second president, President Ali Hassan Mwenyi, continued by my, by my predecessor, who was successor to President, president Mwenyi. These reforms have not been easy, as I said earlier, since they, by their very nature, they bite on the comfort of some sections of our people and displace others from their economic position or from their economic vantage positions. But they were necessary. They were a necessary bitter pill to swallow. Because the, prior to that, the, micro, the macroeconomic frame was out of track completely. So if you continue with the, with the old policies which, which, which got you there, and say, if I do this, the people will, will, will hurt. It, it won't help. So we had to take some of those measures 
continue on them. But it is heartwarming indeed to say that, to see the, that the sustaining of the economic reforms have worked well for our country. Our economy has continued to register strong macroeconomic performance. GDP growth rate has been at an average of 7% over the last two and a, one and a half decades. Tanzania is among the 10 fastest growing economies in Africa and among the 20 in the world. Our GDP now stands at $43 billion compared to $14.4 billion in 2005. And GDP per capita has increased from 375 to 944 currently. We have succeeded to tame inflation. It was almost getting out of control. At some point in 2011, it went up to 18% as we we're moving forward. We had to do a lot of interventions, and now it is around 4.8, 4.6. Our target has been to get to 4 to 5% by, by June, but we, we go to 4.8 in November, November last year. But it has not been easy. We have to take a number of measures, but we had to take them because they were good for the economy. Government revenue correction has also increased. When we came into office, it was an average of 177 billion Tanzanian shillings. Now it is 800 billion shillings. Now I was, I, was, I was talking to a friend, the cabinet, you know, at some point I was asked, what is your wish? I said, if my wish is if we can get government revenues to 500 billion shillings a month, I'll turn this country into paradise. <laughs> Uh, now we are at 800. I, I still can't make it. <laughs> 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 the demand far uh, outstrips our resources. Of course, maybe let me, this, this is too little compared to the demand to meet government. 177 billion is about 96 million dollars. 800 billion is about 433. What is that for a country like, like ours with, with a lot in terms of money? That is why support, for, support from friends like the United States has, 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 has been very useful in bootstrapping our, our, our efforts. Of course, we have accelerated the pace of poverty reduction in the last six years. In 2000, from 2000 to 2007, Reduction was 2%. In three years, in, in the next, the coming, in, in 2007 to 2014, it was 5.5% reduction. There's acceleration there in the same, same number of seven years. And I'm sure we'll do better the next seven years. But however, the future looks even brighter for our economy as we implement a number of structured programs the government and the government revenues, of course, will also improve. We have discovered 55 trillion cubic feet of, of natural gas beginning in 2010, which, which is enormous uh, opportunity. I'm sure the president at that time will not have the problems that I'm, f I'm, I'm having. And there will be enough revenues. Of course, what we are working now is that we should not catch the Dutch disease. The ten, at the end of the day, the resources will be turned into a curse instead of an opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have succeeded to scale up the provision of basic social and economic services, hence increasing, Tanzan, increasing Tanzanians, tan, the number of Tanzanians who have access to these important services. This has contributed in a big way to improvement of their life, of their, of their livelihood. Let me give a few examples. In education, for example, enrollment in primary education is now at 98%. Secondary school enrollment increased from, increased three and a half times between 2005 and 2014 from 525,325 to 1.8 million students. Right? It's a phenomenal increase. And how did this happen? We mobilized the communities to build secondary schools. We were able to build over 3,000 secondary schools 
within within this, this period of time. That's why we're able to, to, to increase the, the student population by three and a half times. University enrollment also has increased from 40,719 in 2005. We are now at 200,986. So we've scaled up a lot in terms, in terms of, of our education opportunities for our sons and daughters. But the other, good, the other important thing worth mentioning is that there are more girls than boys in primary school now. Because the complaint has always been gender parity by the women. My, my wife is, is leading that, that charge. <laughs> At some point I said, you talk about the girl child. Whose mother is the boy child? <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> No, she, say, she says, no, no, you, you, you have had a lot of privileges. You are talking about these who have been underprivileged. I say, you are right, and I support you. Of course, in secondary school, there is gender parity. We still, we still have to do that with, with higher education. But the number, of, the number of women is also increasing at a very fast pace in, in university education as well. The number of people who have access to electricity also has increased from 10% in 2005 to 36%. We had given ourselves a target of 30% by 2015. We reached 36% two years ago. And you think by, by the end of the year when we take stock, probably we, get, we go to 40% or, 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 or above. We did not, it did not cover the, 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 the urban areas alone. We now have been able to, ge to get electricity to 5,336 villages in the rural areas out of the 12,423, which is 43% of these villages have electricity. And the program is, 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 is ongoing of rural electrification. The number of people who have access to clean water, uh, clean and safe portable water has increased from 74 to 86 in urban areas and from 53 to 60% in rural areas. This is an area where we need to do better with regards to rural water supply. With regards to healthcare, we have built more dispensaries, more health centers, and more hospitals. As a result, more Tanzanians have access to better health services these days. Of course, it is not, it is not good enough. Of course, this has translated into reduction in, in the under five mortality rate from 112 death per 1,000 life birth in 2004 to 54 per every 1,000 life birth, and we have met the MDG and surpassed it on, 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 on child mortality. Maternal mortality rates have come down from 578 to 432. We are, we are way below the, uh, the MDG target of, of getting to 191. But we are better off because we started at 800, went to 578, we are now at 454, now at 432. But it's not good enough. You are talking about 8,000 mothers dying every year. When you have a population of 48 million people, you will say 8,000 mothers is, is not a big deal. But every, every life is important. And for a woman to die in the process of giving life to another human being, that's not right. It's not fair, and we should do everything possible to stop that. It should be a moment of celebration. It's not a moment of, of sorrow and grief. Malaria infections and death have, have, have been cut down to 50%. We've had a number of interventions there, long-lasting bed nets, insect, uh, indoor residual spraying, the use of artimethylene combination therapy, which have really helped to control malaria. We are now discussing the elimination. In Zanzibar, malaria has been eliminated. But of course, there is a period until we can satisfy ourselves. Because it's the third time malaria has been eliminated in Zanzibar. And the first and second time eliminated but came back. So that's why we are now concentrating on the mainland, the serious intervention on the mainland, so that those who travel from, from Bagamore, like me, should not take malaria parasites to Zanzibar and get bitten by, by mosquito. And then malaria starts again there. That's why we have four efforts are now concentrated. HIV infection rates have also come down. We were at 8%, now we are at 5.1. We have met the MDG target for, for reduction in, 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 in HIV infection rates. 
immunization of children and mothers and pregnant mothers is way above 90 percent. It is translated into reduction of maternal on, on child mortality rate in particular. Availability of, of medicines has improved considerably, although there are still teething challenges to overcome. Expansion of training in training is helping to increase the number of, of health professionals that slowly but surely closing the gap. At some point in 2005, the ratio of doctor to patient was 1 to 30,000. Nurse to, to patient was 1 to 23,000. In the US, it is 1 to less than 500. So you can see the enormity of the challenges that, 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 that we face. It's really, it's, it's, it's a tough job. Mm -hmm. It's a tough job, but very rewarding. Because we, I chose myself, I volunteered. And my consolation, my comfort is serving the people. And when I see improvement in these numbers, that's the comfort that I have. We have also re recorded tremendous success on road infrastructure. Close to 6,000 kilometers of roads have been paved. We are doing it out of a total of 11,474 that we are doing it at, at, at the moment in the country. In the past, some people from Tanzania to go to their, to their, to their hometowns or, or places, they had to pass through one or two countries. They had to go through Kenya and Uganda, like the ambassador here, she comes from Bukoba on the West Lake. She had, got to, she had to go through Kenya, Uganda, and then because, because the roads there were, were, were tarmac. Some from Mwanza, they had to go through Kisumu and then to, to Mwanza. Now they don't have to do that because we really, we really done invested heavily on doing the trunk roads. We are almost doing finishing that, 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 that job. My, my successor will not have to be troubled with these issues. You will have to be preoccupied with some other issues. But when the road is, <laughs> is the roads are, are, are fixed. Now he has got to do the regional to the, to the, to the districts. That's the, the thing that, that we are actually, actually, actually working on now. And you can get to any point in Tanzania within a day which was not the case in the past. It takes two to three days. And when it was the rainy season, you get stuck for weeks, special distances. Of course, we have, we, we have, we have now set our sights on upgrading the railway, the railway network. It's an old railway, bequeathed to us by the Germans in 2012. We are now going to migrate to, to standard gauge. And the processes are well underway. We think by June, we'll start construction of the, of the, of the new railway line. Improving governance has been a top priority agenda of, our, of my administration. We have been taking measures to promote transparency and accountability. We are part of the Open Government Initiative. We are now working on the Rights of Information Bill, which is, which is take, being taken to Parliament. Uh, we are also working on the protection of whistleblowers, uh, protect their whistles <laughs> <laughs> so that they are not heard. Well, there has been deliberate measures, there have been different measures taken to build and strengthen institutions of democracy, of governance, of accountability and rule of law. The, the judiciary is independent of government interferences. The parliament is very vibrant mm -hmm. and performs so well in, in, with its oversight responsibilities of government. And I'm sure when, when, when we go to Parliament, when Parliament sits, the government is on its toes. They don't know what is going to happen next. What is it that is going to be unearthed? The Office of the Controller General has been strengthened. Uh, we, have, we, have put, we, have, we have made new legislation to give it a greater independency uh, to, to, to work. But also the, the other thing which I've, I've done with the the control and director general is to make their reports public because they have been taken to parliament and the parliament to debate on them a few, few, hour, few, few, few hours then leave it. But I've made it uh, that reports are published, the people will know how their money is spent. There was also something that had to, we had to make a, another, another amendment, make a legal provision because when they do audit, they may discover that in this account, some money may, be, may have been stolen. But because the, 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 the procedure is, and it's constitutional, 
They, they, had, they said they'd take the reports to the president every year on the, before the 30th of March. You've done that before I left. And the president has to take this to the ministers responsible for tabling in the parliament within seven days, which we usually do, and then it goes to parliament. So I said, but look here, you, you may discover that there's been theft in, 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 in this government department. Then what happens? We say it's up to parliament. And parliament, the books are so huge. They, they cannot go in, on, into those details. So what I said, look here, you guys, if you, th if you discover there has been theft, take this man to the police. They told me that there is no legislation for it. I said, if the problem is legislation, let's do it. Yeah, we, ha we had, a, we had a, another amendment to the law. We gave them those powers. So now when they discover, they send the hand over these people to the police. In, you know, in order to steal financial discipline. Otherwise, if people steal and, and nothing happens out of it, they will continue to, to, to do that. Well, of course, parliament debates are, are, are open debates. They are televised, live on television. The fight against corruption is unrelenting. There is no undue protection of people suspected or being found guilty of engaging in corrupt practices. The anti-corruption law has been strengthened. The original one had only four crimes. We have extended that, expanded that to 21 now. We have given the, 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 the institution responsible for preventing corruption and combating corruption greater latitude of prosecution. Now working with the the, the director of public prosecution. We have strengthened the institution. They have offices all over the, all over the country now in every district. We have, pro we, have, we have given them a lot of money. They have employed a lot of staff. And they have now a lot of working facilities to build capacities to do this. Of course, there are issues that we need to build. Their capacity for investigation and their capacities to, to, to prosecute. Because when you take these cases to court and you lose one, the next one, the following one, then we think there must be either a problem or you know, on the part of, of investigation or on the problem of, 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 of prosecution. And we are working, we're working to strengthen this. I'm sure when we have done this properly, we should have a formidable institution. But so far, so good. There are more people who have been taken to court, more have been, have been imprisoned. A lot of money has been saved by, by the, of course, we need to do more. Well, what I can see, simply say is that I fulfilled my pledge of widening democratic space, significantly improving political environment on which the opposition parties could grow. Because the fear has been maybe trying to cramp down on, 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 on the opposition so that they don't, you know, they, there is freedom of association, there is freedom of expression. Further efforts have been directed at strengthening the freedom of the press which you have done well. We have 825 newspapers. <laughs> Government newspapers are only two. <laughs> we have 95 radio stations. Government radio station is only one. <laughs> we have 28 television stations, and government television is only one. So if somebody says in Tanzania they, they stifle on, on freedom of, of the press, we say, <laughs> if, they, if this is the intention, we wouldn't have had so many of these newspapers. And they would just go there and say the president has failed. It doesn't bother me because I've not failed. <laughs> it is his problem, it's not my problem. <laughs> I continue to deliver services. There are so many daily newspapers. You need $20 a day if you have to buy all, all the newspapers, all the daily newspapers in Tanzania. So that's, that, that's how far we have come with, with freedom of the press. Of course, the times we, we have got to, 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 to tell them to behave, I said clearly that we cannot allow the freedom of, 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 of the press to be misused to break down the country. I said, because it's, 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 not, it's not acceptable. We cannot, we cannot wait until the country breaks down in the name of freedom of the press. Some, somebody, one, one, one day somebody asked me a question. I think a journalist from, from, from Kenya asked me a question. But you, 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 you have been you have cracked down on, the, on this newspaper? I said, fine. I said, if you think every journalist is a good man, 
in the ICC today, one of the person who is facing charges there is a journalist. There is, there was, there was President Uru Kenyatta, there was Ruto, and there, there, but the, this Ruto and these journalists are still there. So I, I asked, I asked her, has the IC, is ICC interfering into the freedom of the press? Then the, then, then the debate ended there. <laughs> there is freedom, but no, it, it cannot be freedom to break a country. The genocide in Rwanda was orchestrated by Radio Mir Colin. When they were using the radio to say, go and kill the Tusis, they are cockroaches. So, you know, so it turns, when, when, when there is this kind of misuse, you cannot just simply say, oh, it is, in the, it, is, it is press freedom, leave them. People are killing each other in the streets and we say this is press freedom. At least we have drawn some red lines. When it go borders on, on, on breaking the country, we say this one is not acceptable. We don't allow this. But say the government has failed, the ruling party has failed, that we say it does not bother us because we have not failed. The relationship between the United States of America and the United Republic of Tanzania is excellent. And to say it more appropriately, our relations are at their best state ever. Government-to-government -government relations are strong, as evidenced by two presidents visiting Tanzania within a span of, of five years. George W. Bush visited with us in 2008. President Obama, 2013. Bill Clinton visited us in 2000. But President Clinton has, has been to Tanzania several times after leaving office. Mm -hmm. And President Bush has already been there twice after, after leaving office. They continue to work with us on the programs that they've been doing while, while, while in office. Several senior government officials of our two governments have exchanged visits, which have helped to strengthen our bilateral relations. Tanzania and the United States see eye to eye on a number of global and African issues, and we have supported each other in international and regional fora. The U.S. has extended a big hand of support to Tanzania's development endeavors, which has made a huge difference to us improving the lives of our people and the development of our country. I have in mind good work being done by the USID, covering many aspects of our socioeconomic life of the people of Tanzania, Programs like PEPFA on HIV AIDS, PMI on malaria, MCC that covers the use of infrastructure, water supply, roads, electricity. And when you talk about this achievement that has been made, partly it's, it is contribution of the MCC program in rural electrification. Program of the Feed the Future, which Ambassador Castle knows very well. Power Africa, which has uh, just been, been, been rolled out. All these are making phenomenal contributions to the development of Tanzania and the people of our country. People-to-people -people relations are also strong and getting stronger with each passing day. I believe visits like mine, uh, which I undertook to Seattle yesterday. Yeah. Bill Gates has been, has been phenomenal in supporting our programs. He's there in malaria. They are in, uh, in HIV, is in agriculture, they are in family planning, and many of these problems. So we have so many private foundations from the U.S. that are doing terrific job. Action, action need, and all these. They've been doing a lot of work, and these are people to people, world vision. Of course, there are individual Americans also who are working in Tanzania and have uh, good relations with our people and have been, been helping us. In conclusion, let me say, when I took, when I looked back to 2005 when I assumed office, I hold no regrets, only harbor lessons. I believe my successor will carry on and learn from these lessons so that he or she can continue from where we will have left off. One thing I'm proud of is that we have built strong foundations to guide our country in the implementation of the Tanzania Development Vision 2025, 
whose overarching objective is to transform the country from a least developed country to a middle income country by 2025. I have in mind the long term perspective plan whose guru is here, Dr. Pango, which is divided into three five year development plans. This is meant to guide our, our transition from uh, an LDC to a middle income country. But also I have in mind programs that are like the big results now. It's something that I conceived. My preoccupation has been how does the government deliver? Because you are told things are working. Don't worry, sir. No, things are moving. But when they say things are moving and things are working, you, you, you don't get the feel of things actually working. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we try to work on innovative ways of ensuring, ascertaining that if somebody says things are working, then I can confirm from my office at the, the Presidential deli the, the, the Delivery Bureau. Somebody there in, in that office, they're following up all, all, the, all what is happening, all the government ministries. Then they will say, yes, these things are happening here. This is not happening. And we call the minister, the permanent secretary, because they've signed an, an MOA with me, an undertaking, that they're going to, to, to deliver on those promises. So I believe it's, it's something innovative. We've done it for about two to three years now. And if, if continued, I, I found it quite useful. I, I, I believe it continued as, as, as part of the norms of doing, doing government business. I'm sure it's going to be quite helpful. Well, also, I hope we will be able to, to have in place policy and legislation on the management of gas economy and revenue, revenues. We are working on this one so that we don't catch the, get the Dutch disease, but we, we don't also deplete or use all the money now. We need to keep some for, for, the, for the coming generations. Ultimately, I hope we will hold free, fair, peaceful, and credible elections so that I can hand over the presidents to my, dis to my successor in a tranquil atmosphere. I cannot wait to see that day. <laughs> President Kikwete, thank you so much. I, I, we really appreciate the candor with which you have shared to us how you feel you have done yeah. uh, under the last 10 years of your presidency. I want to pick up where you left off. Yes. And maybe I'll be so bold as to remind you that even after you leave office, your leadership role will probably continue. Perhaps. How? <laughs> when you I, I'm, not, I'm not president. No, no, no. It doesn't have to be as president. Yes. It doesn't have to be president. And I raise <coughs> this issue because I think this is one of the challenges that uh, many African countries face, that uh, presidents do not see a life and contributions that they could continue to make to the continent mm -hmm. and to their countries after their presidency. Mm -hmm. There has developed this tendency in some countries to hang on to the presidency. And so I think if we begin to show that the leadership role continues in a different capacity, perhaps, mm. um, that this will be one area where we can, bring, we can begin to break this trying to hang on to power forever, if you will. And granted, it's only a few African leaders. So you didn't touch a little bit on your plans for the post-presidency phase of your life. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about what your, your thinking is in that area. Well, of course, w w was, uh, first in relation to what you said, mm -hmm. well, if, if, if people think I can be useful in, 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 in any way, I'll definitely volunteer. <coughs> I'm still in good health. I have, I have a lot of energy. Um, I'm 65, but not too old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 65 years young. Yeah. Younger, <laughs> yes. Well, of course, what, whatever, whatever I'm offered to, if I can be useful, I'll definitely be useful. Looking at, I, 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 I really want to, I, I'm working on, 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 on my own, my, on my own foundation. Mm -hmm. But I want to concentrate on issues of agricultural development and issues of health. These are the issues that uh, preoccupied me throughout my presidency. We've tried a lot to develop our agriculture, it is not it is not registered. 
uh, as much growth as, as we do. Of course, it's doing well. Uh, in the last three years now, we, we have huge surpluses of food. Every year increasing. Our biggest problem now is storage. Our <coughs> biggest problem is low food prices for the farmers who are complaining. But it is good for the urban poor when the food prices are low. It has also translated in, 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 in the drop in the, in the, in the, in the threshing rates. Mm -hmm. So my, my focus essentially would be, would be on, on health issues, agriculture health issues, maternal child health. I, I want to continue on doing those issues somehow in malaria. Mm. But of course, when you deal with maternal health and child health, you also have to touch malaria because it is the largest killer of young of, of, of children and the largest killer of pregnant women. Um, could you give us, share some thoughts in terms of how uh, Africa might be able to break this um, desire to hang on to, uh, to power? Tanzania has obviously found the right response to it. <laughs> maybe, I'm uh, uh, maybe I'm not the best person to ask. <laughs> 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 but we could learn from Tanzania. No, you know, every country is different. Every country has its own. And, and this, I should not say, I'm, 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 I'm only giving any opinion. Yes, absolutely. So, situations are different. <coughs> if, if they think the best is for the leaders to, to, to continue, maybe we, we, we you invite some of these leaders here and talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Abs absolutely. Uh, ask them, why do you think it is appropriate for you to continue to, to, continue <laughs> to be in office? They, they may have better, better, better explanation. Mm -hmm. My only good explanation is that it is good after 10 years to move on. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> President Nyerere really left. Mm -hmm. President Mwinyi came. President Mwinyi left. President Kappa came. A every time there is change, there is a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Can this manage? And you know, when I came into office, it is 10 years now, I, I, I still don't look very old. I, I, looked, I, I looked a small boy. <laughs> a, and some of, some of them never believed that a person of my age could deliver anything. Absolutely. But now I, I, I think Tanzanians are appreciate <laughs> that we have done so much in, in, in these 10 years. This, this young man has done so much in these 10 years. Of course, we have not finished everything. Mm -hmm. There is a lot more for, for, for the next for the next president to do, he will leave office. There will still be a lot to, to, to do. But for, so for, for me, it's all something that I'll sit down and, and start contemplating, conspiring on, on, on hanging on. Sure. It is a stressful job. <laughs> no, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> it is stressful and thankless. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it is stressful and thankless. So if you have had you an opportunity to serve in 10 years, move on, let the others now get the blunt. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they, they will be celebrating, contending. Uh, after the moment they get into office, and then they say, oh, so this is the job I've been waiting. Uh, <laughs> 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 I've been craving for. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you yes. talked very eloquently, I thought, about some of the uh, challenges of nation building. Yes. And as you look back over Tanzania's history, in terms of the management of diversity mm -hmm. that has uh, enabled Tanzania to hold together yes. uh, over these years, what would, you see, what would you say have been the two critical factors uh, in management of that diversity? Because the management of diversity is an issue that has plagued so many African countries mm -hmm. and is really at the root of so much of the conflict we see in uh, many countries, the politicization of diversity and the mismanagement of diversity. Mm -hmm. What are the two key factors you would say have enabled uh, Tanzania to do? I, I, th I think our, our first president had a lot of foresight. The first thing he dealt with was tribalism. And when he, he eliminated chiefs, <laughs> there were very strong chiefs and kings and emperors. That was abolished. Of course, he was accused at the beginning that he's, he's too power hungry, he's consolidating power unto himself, but it has helped the country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other thing was whenever, whenever you 
you, you feel any form in government. There is no reference to tribe. Nobody would ask you what tribe you are. Neither, there is no reference to religion. Unless you go to hospital. Mm. Just in case you die. And there is nobody to claim. At least they know this one is a Muslim, this one is a Christian. They look for the, for the Muslim and, and, and Christian clergy to go to take them. So I, th I think this, this has helped, has helped. But also, you know, we, colonialism in our country had, or Christian missionaries had areas of favor and areas of disfavor. So these areas of favor, that's where they concentrated. And all the schools were there, uh, ba basic services were there, because British, the British did not, did, not, did, did not bother with education. Mm -hmm. They left it to Christian missionaries. They built on two schools for, for sons and daughters of chiefs, Tabora School mm -hmm. and Tabora Girls. <coughs> Otherwise, the British did not build any school. So they left this business in the hands of Christian missionaries. Of course, their, their role was evangelization. So, and of course, they, they, they concentrated in areas where the climate was good, <laughs> favorable to them. So in the, in the Northern Highlands, in the Southern Highlands, uh, in the areas where the ambassador comes from, uh, where also the weather is, is close to Uganda, it's, it's in the plateaus. All these other areas. So it is in these areas there you find most of the educated people. Don't help. So what, what was done after independence? Going to secondary school was not based on, on getting the, 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 the best boy or the best girl and then you draw a line. It was allocated in quarters. Every region had to produce people to go to secondary school. The same was done with the military. Because the, the, the colonial powers chose a few tribes to be in the fighting echelons. We had people in the, in, in the Eastern Lake. We had people in Iringa. These were formed, uh, 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 other tribes were in the brass band because they are good musicians. <laughs> and tribes like ours, <laughs> the, the military was not our job. So the, then also there was a location that if the army is going to, 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 to enroll, 10,000, every region gets a quota and there's got to be everybody. That's why in the military today, a person like me is also part of that military. Otherwise, during colonial powers, there is no way. I would have been left to deal with my coconut trees, palms. <laughs> so so th th there's, there have been a, a, number, a number of deliberate interventions which has helped to really weave the nation. Mm -hmm. Everybody finding that he is or she is part, 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 part of the national king, w which the colonial powers, which the colonial powers did, did not. Of course, what we have done, now we have gone beyond that. The, the program I was talking about, we have now instituted the policy of building a secondary school at every ward, or in every ward. Now you have in every ward in, this in our country, people who have gone to secondary school. And a number of them now have gone beyond secondary school. They are now in universities. They become scientists. They become mm -hmm. officials. And it, it, it is this is because we've been saying, when we started, we started from humble beginnings. We don't, we don't have enough teachers. We say, just build the schools. We'll train the teachers. Our university in 2005 was producing 500 teachers. Now, last year, we, em we employed 18,000 teachers. Because I, I, I spoke to all the universities. I said, train teachers. We will employ them. So because the trained teachers will employ them, we support them with, 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 with student loans. Then people, people volunteered. They established education faculties and they trained teachers. The problem which used to be there is no longer there. 
we, ha we, ha we in fact we have now have saturation of the social sciences teachers. Our problem is with science teachers, which we, we n n the, the natural science teachers. We, we've now embarked on a specific program now to train more. We started with 12,000 in I think in the next three years we have a shortage of 18,000. I think in the next three four years we'll also finish that one. Mm -hmm. So. I think it is, it is measures like these ones that have, have really helped weave the, 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 country, the country together. Because in a number of countries, there are, there are, there are problems of tribalism, which has, has become very intense, tearing these nations, uh, nations apart. Of course, na na now we have, we have a, a, a movement or, or a threat of, of religionization of politics mm -hmm. and politi politicization of religion. It, 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 it is now creeping, it is now creeping, it is something which, which is a threat. We, 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 we are, we are, we've taken cognizance of that. Uh, it, be, it began in, 2012, in 2010 and it is now becoming, becoming rather intense. You know, as Franz Fanon was saying um, in, the, in, in the chapter Richard of the Earth when he talked of the African bourgeoisie, um, being so parochial, they would always go at great length and, and, and invoke religion, tribe, and so on in order to get, to get into office. It is something that, that, that is emerging, but we'll find ways of, of, of managing it. That's why I'm not tired of talking to the, to, to the politicians, talking to the clergymen, and trying to tell them that this, we cannot guide our nation this way. We cannot politicize politics. We cannot uh, politicize religion. We cannot religionize politics it is going to be bad for our country. Mm -hmm. It's going to be bad for our country. Th this, is, this is only a threat that, that, that I'm seeing. It has not yet taken root, mm -hmm. but I think the best time is to act now before mm -hmm. it takes root, because that is going to be more inflammable. Mm -hmm. And we'll invite, we'll invite so many of these other guys, the bad guys now will, will come there. Mm -hmm. And some will also claim allegiance, I'm, I'm, I'm a legend, I have a claim allegiance to ISIS, to Al-Shabaab, and we have so many of these problems, uh, so many of these uh, crazy guys around us. So that, that's, what I, that's what I see. But otherwise, um, that, that's, that's how we have evolved. Oh. Probably my perception is right. Again, of course, the, the Kiswahili language has also helped us. Yes. It is a language that is spoken by everybody. I'll speak my, o my, 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 own, my own mother tongue. Liberata would speak her own. Uh, and the minister here is only Kiswahili. <laughs> he, he, he is from Zanzibar. <laughs> it originated from there and then came to us on the mainland. Yeah. But, but, but like Israel has also been a, a unifying factor. Sure. That you go anywhere, you communicate with anybody using the Israeli language. Sure. No, I think you make a very powerful uh, point about the importance of inclusive governance so everybody feels that they are mm. part and parcel of this uh, nation that is being forged and that that's where perhaps a lot of the focus needs to be. Before I pivot to economic issues, let me ask a question about uh, the constitution and the review process. Yes. I think it was an, about three days ago when information came out that the process had yet again been delayed. Yeah. Could you speak a little bit to some of the challenges there? And I know it's not just a Tanzania issue. My own country of birth, Zambia, is struggling through this constitutional uh, process. But it is an important pas part of the governance uh, equation mm. in all countries. And so what is your position on where you stand and the way forward? The, uh, the, the, the problem we have now is actually delays in the delivery of the BVR kits. Could you explain what the BVR kits are, sir? Biometric mm. voter registry. Uh, it's the, because we, we, we have a voter's register now, which is manual. Now you want to migrate to, to better technology. Because the BVR, uh, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have eyes as an ID, you have the fingerprints taken. There is a lot of information that is, that is built in, 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 into that. So we thought it's a good idea. Of course, at some point, there were delays of payment, but it was only, 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 only at the initial stage. But later, when, when, when the payment was done, 
then the, the Chinese said, they, because we, we, we contracted a company in South Africa, but they, have, they, are, they are sourcing this equipment <laughs> from, from China. They went on uh, New Year holiday, uh, on the Chinese New Year, for, for two weeks. <laughs> then we, we, t we tell the contractor, look here, you cannot tell us about <laughs> your people went on holiday. And then so they, 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 they started. And then there, there, there were problems again of, of they, had, they, they said they had problems of getting the lithium, lithium batteries. <laughs> because those who were assembling had, had, had everything assembled. But they were probably getting lithium batteries. And then, then you know, we had, we, we had really to talk to the Chinese government. I had to intervene. Talk to the Chinese government to say, help us. Because we cannot really afford this thing to be delayed. I think now we got a promise from the Chinese government they're going to create a, they said they're going to create a green line. A green line so that they have through the Chinese customs so that the equipment are, are going to be trans going to be required. So of course they have announced delays. It is more related to, to the equipment being, being being manufactured on time. So they, they the Chinese government they said they are going to help us. If if they can deliver on time, I think the, the period is going to be to be shortened. So it, it is much more related to, to, to that one. I'm privy to that. I talked to everybody in the Chinese government. They said they will help us. They have, so that's, that's, that's precisely the, 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 what is at issue now. All right, I seem to hear you saying it's more of a technical issue rather than a substantive issue with the content of... Uh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's not that. It's yeah. where people are ready now for the, for, for the referendum. Okay. Only, only it has got to be done using the new the new voter register, okay. which we're also going to use in the, in, okay. in the elections. Okay. Because if we use this one now and then you have got it, it will delay matters. So we said, let us do the voter register now. Those who have been registered will vote in the, 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 on the referendum on the constitution and later vote in the, in the, in the, in the elections. That's it. One other C question. We've talked about the Constitution and you touched on this uh, C corruption issue yourself. What I wanted to ask, and I thought you were very good in terms of uh, uh, addressing the measures that you, were, you have taken to address uh, corruption. Mm. So my question to you would be, do you feel these measures are, are, are sufficient to ensure that this does not become a systemic issue? And then secondly, uh, do you worry about how this might impact upon your legacy? Uh, <laughs> how, 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 one, it, it is not systemic. Okay. I think the, the measures that we have taken of dealing with it will, will, not, uh, will, not, will, will not leave it to degenerate to become systemic. How it, really, it is going to impact my legacy? Well, corruption has been there during the time of President Nyerere, but he's the one who, who established the, 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 the Prevention of Corruption Bureau at that time. He left the matter as well. Unless somebody would say that he expected during my time, we'll wipe it out. <laughs> then I, then if, 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 if this were through the assumption, then I would say it will impact on my legacy. Mm -hmm. It was there during President Henry's time. It was there during President Mwinyi, President Mkapa. What we have actually done is to strengthen the fight. As I said, we, we, we did a new, a, a new registration, I think it was 2008, because I met these people in, in there. They were complaining about this. I said, look here, now sit down. Come up with a proposal of the legislation that you think is going to be, to be a stronger legislation that is going to give you a lot, a lot of teeth and muscle to deal with the problem. They came up with a proposal. We sent it to Parliament. It was enacted. Of course, as I said, in the, in the original law, there were only four crimes related to corruption. Now we have 21. Even misuse of office is part of the part, part of that. Mm -hmm. That's why we have some of our, our government officials be, uh, being taken to court for misuse of office, causing 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 loss to government is is also part 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 of that of that, of that corruption law. So this 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 one we have done. I said we have to do a, we have got to be an institution building. We are building this institution. We we have given it in, in that legislation more powers to more leverage, more latitude to, to take action. But also we gave them 
uh, giving them an enough budget. They were in only they were they were in, in zonal centers. Now they are in every district. They have been able to employ officials, uh, officers, many of them. I think last <coughs> last time we, uh, the last time I think they employed about nine hundred. They're big employers. So we, we are we are we are, we are concerned increasing their staff. The the, uh, the only thing which which I, which I, I I related to is. Well, I. I've been in the military. I've been in the military academy training people to become officers. I said, in the military, there are training manuals. This is how you advance. This is how you attack. This is how you withdraw. So there are there are there are there are. The institutions, training institutions for police, we have been working with the FBI to train our people. There are institutions training our intelligence services, the intelli the, our military. There are no institutions training and corruption officers. Mm. So that, 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 that's why I was saying we, we, re we really need, need to, to, to. So we've been, we've been talking to the, U to the UK government to work. To, to see if the serious fraud office can help train our people. The last time I, I, I was here for the meeting, we had discussions with the, the powers that be on how they can also help us train our people on the prosecution side. Because we take people to court and we lose. And when you take somebody to court, it is high profile, everybody celebrates. And for us, the women, you late. So the women are so good at it. The European women don't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at, the end of, at the end of the day, in this case that you celebrated so much, you end up losing in court. You know, it, it is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's very, 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 very frustrating. Mm -hmm. So we said we, we really need, need to build more capacity to train our people more on the, on the capacity for investigation and the capacities for, for prosecution. We've been discussing with the U.S. government and and. and and, and the UK to help us sure. build, build capacities in this regard. I believe if we can get there, we should be able to get there. And especially when you have some of these that are cross, cross border mm -hmm. uh, corruption related cases, then how to be able to go and investigate a company in Belgium that has been involved in corrupt practice in Tanzania, involving the officials of, of Tanzania. So these are some of the yeah. things that we need and then how, how to, to establish collaboration with, with our people. But otherwise, I'm saying we have been, we have been trying to do an, to be a lot to, to build this capacity. Well, if, 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 if it were to be done with during my term of office, then it will impact my legacy. I believe the next president will, 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 incre will intensify the fight. He will leave office. The problems will still be there. Was even in the United States there is still I was corruption. coming to that. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was coming to that. I just wanted to uh, clarify that uh, I think from my perspective we're saying the same thing. There's yes. corruption everywhere in every yeah. country. But I think the issue that we need uh, yeah. to address is that Africa is probably the continent that can least afford corruption given yeah. the poverty issues and everything else that the continent is dealing with. I agree with. with you. But also Africa tends to have the weakest mechanisms for checking and holding people accountable. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that you are saying you've been very focused on this accountability uh, questions in terms of strengthening uh, Tanzania's ability sure. to hold people accountable and to prosecute people uh, for their uh, corruption. So I, I think we're all saying yeah, we, the same we, thing. We should, we should build the institutions. It, Absolutely. It's, 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 it's not president-based. Mm -hmm. It should be institution-based. Exactly. Based. We, 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 with, with or without the president, people will be, will, will be held responsible. They will go to court. But if you have told the president responsible, there is corruption. Yes, what do you do about it? I cannot investigate. Mm -hmm. I cannot prosecute. Yeah. So the, you, you really, we have got to be to be decent. I, I, one thing that we should do in Africa is build the institutions of governance. Yes. That, that's, that's the area. We have weak institutions. And if you can build a strong institution, that, that will be fine. Absolutely. All right, let me turn now very quickly to the, uh, on the economic issues.
Yes. And I think two questions. I, I, I did grow up in the Southern African region, and I remember in the 70s and the 80s, uh, Tanzania, and I believe Tanzania has come a tremendously long way on the economic and development front. There's no mm -hmm. question about that. Having said that, and you yourself raised this when you were talking about your desire to attract uh, international partners mm -hmm. uh, to Tanzania, uh, Tanzania currently ranks in um, the bottom 20 mm. in terms of the ease of doing business in Tanzania. Sure. Uh, what do you see as the most critical obstacles mm. to Tanzania raising its uh, ranking and providing a more <coughs> favorable environment to people, both local uh, citizens, mm. but also international partners engaging Tanzania on the economic front? One, you're right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one, you're right. You're right. <laughs> And it makes me sick, you know. <laughs> I'm very unhappy. Wh wh whenever these numbers are released by the World Bank, you know, uh, we, 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 we've been sliding backwards. <laughs> we, we sat in cabinet. I said, why are we sliding backwards? How do we stem this decline and reverse this trend so that we, 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 we move upwards? Because at some point, we were among, among the top ten reforming, reforming countries on, 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 the, on, 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 the doing, on the doing business. So at times when you talk to government bureaucrats, you sort of sit down, come, come up with ideas, tell me, they would come there defending themselves. They think they're, they, they think they're doing right, but there is somebody somewhere who does not wish them well. <laughs> I said, look, yeah, this is not the way to go. So what we did, what we did, because in the, in the Presidential de Delivery Bureau, the big results now, we, we've been working on, 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 on six sectors, on uh, education, healthcare, agriculture, energy, infrastructure, uh, no, it's, 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 yeah, it's education, Agriculture, energy, infrastructure, water, and resource mobilization. Mm -hmm. And we chose these six on a very democratic manner. We sat in cabinet. We said, okay, fine, we can't do everything. I want us to, 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 to choose six sectors that we want to, we want to focus on. So that at least, we, we, because w when you are not focused, you try to spread so thin, trying to, play, to please everybody, and nobody say thank you. <laughs> because everybody is complaining. So he said, at least let, 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 let's, let's choose six sectors that will focus on them. So I said, let's do it on in a very democratic way. Because with modern technology, which I'm not very, 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 very conversant with, they came up with a device where you can vote secretly, but it registers. So I said, okay, fine. Let each one of you choose the, the first, the, the number one sector. We had all the sectors of government written there. I'm sure every minister chose his sector. <laughs> and then we should now choose the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. We close there. A and, and, and then when, when, we, when, we, we, when we did the, the arithmetic, that's how we, we came to it. Everybody now chose education. Everybody chose water. They chose electricity. They chose agriculture. They chose infrastructure. And they chose resource mobilization. Health came number seven. But because we had agreed on six, there was a lot, there was a lot of argument. Now, how, why don't we take health? Of course, we later included that one. So now what I've done, I, I asked the, the CEO of the Presidential Delivery Bureau that to conduct a special, because we do this in, in labs, the sectors that we choose, we bring in people from, from the public, general public, who are interested, the non-government organizations, government officials dealing with, with those issues, they sit down. They do an open analysis of the problems. 
and they agree on the targets. We call them KPIs, key performance indicators. They agree on these are the, 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 the priorities. Okay. After that, then we, we, we look for the budget for it. Our problem has been on raising enough money to, to, to implement that one. Then we said, let's, let, let, I told Omarisa, now do the doing business issue. Take it up. On the same model. So we brought in the private sector, the public sector. They sat down for two weeks doing an evaluation discussing what are, what are the issues. They came up with six issues. And then we, we, we factored them as the key performance indicators in, 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 in doing business. So we are now working on, on, on those issues. I'm really aware, I'm very upset with the, with the numbers. Yeah, the World Bank one, the, the Mo Ibrahim mm -hmm. index. Everybody's index, Tanzania, scores very low. I said, this is, this is, this is terribly bad. So. This is what I can say. I'm also not happy. All right. Unfortunately, we have to bring this session to, your to a close, but I will give you one last minute to share a word with us, your final word with the group. Well, I'm sorry I, I talked too much. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I talked too much. Well, w what I can say is that wha one thing the center is doing a terrific job. You know, the, these, these kind of encounters, are rare to, to some of us. Uh, I had a lot of trepidation to accept this uh, I, because I was really fearing the unknown, what would happen there. But it, 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 has, it has been quite useful. At times the questions that you raise also give me an opportunity to think a lot more about, uh, ab about the issues. All I can say is that we are trying our best. We are starting from very low levels when you have a GDP capital of $375. That's the annual income. Mm. I don't know how many of you would survive an income of $375. Even for a day, probably it, 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 it is a problem. But these are the realities that, that, is, that is where we start from. So for, our, for, for some of us, it's, it's, it's really missionary work mm -hmm. to really put in place the, the, the policies, put in place the, the, the right measures to be able to, to slowly or steadily lift our people out of, out, out of this misery. So far, so good. But again, we have been getting a lot of support from, from, from development partners. The US has been phenomenal also in supporting us as the World Bank uh, and uh, the uh, international financial institutions, IFIs, a number of bilateral partners. They have been bootstrapping our efforts. We wish, to the, the, we wish the partnership to continue. I'm sure sometime, someday, we get there. Thank you. So next time, I'll come here as a fellow of the World Institute <laughs> when we, I retire. We would love to have you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would absolutely, uh, <laughs> we would love to have you. Maybe you can help me figure out this post-presidency question. So, <laughs> sir, you're, you're welcome. Th that one, I leave it to you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> on behalf of uh, the Wilson Center leadership and all of the participants here, uh, you know, I want to thank you for taking this time. I know you've been incredibly busy during this, uh, this visit, and so we are grateful that you were able to, to fit us in. I especially thank you for being so open and candid and straight with us. It really does help. Uh, to engage with African leadership and hear how African uh, leaders see their issues uh, that they face, that they're addressing, mm -hmm. and to share with us their perspectives. So we, we thank you very much uh, for your time, and as you ponder your post-October life, mm -hmm. do keep the Wilson Center in mind as well. So we will... I think uh, about that. You, you think <laughs> about it. Uh, all right. So, so please join me in thanking our President Kikwede. Thank you, thank you. Really, really I'll take this one as a souvenir. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, in your seats while the president exits the room.